Expectations are something that all roller coaster enthusiasts have when going into a new park or riding a new roller coaster. Oftentimes, though, these expectations can either be exceeded or not lived up to, making people make lists of what roller coasters they feel are overrated and which are underrated. In this video, I am going to be touching on that very subject, going through my top 10 most overrated and underrated coasters that I have ridden. <laughs> All right, just cut to that intro that I made in Keynote using a sound clip that I got from a Coaster Kids video. Do you guys remember Coaster Kids? Huh. Those were the okay old days. Before this video starts, I just want to point out that 90% of you guys aren't subscribed, so... Bruh, what are you doing? Subscribe, because I post new videos just like this one every single week. Anyways, enjoy the video. Peace. So starting with the underrated, number 10 is Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio. This coaster is amazing, and honestly, I don't know why people do not give it the credit for the top tier coaster that it is. This Morgan Mini Hyper makes you feel like you are falling for five seconds at a time on every single hill before slamming back down in your seat, really emphasizing that airtime that you're getting. The reason why it's not even higher up on this list is because I have heard people give it the credit that it deserves. I've just also heard people bash on it and I've never really heard anyone who has it in their top 10 like I do. Now going to the number 10 most overrated, that is Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Whoever has this as their favorite roller coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas is honestly straight up insane. Because while it is a solid number 3, it can be nowhere close to the level of Iron Rattler and even the level, in my opinion, of Superman Krypton Coaster. While this ride is amazing and it whips you around and gives you some of the best airtime in the park, it just is such a short ride and honestly leaves me underwhelmed a decent amount of time whenever I get off this thing. But the reason why it is still at that number 10 spot and not even higher is just because I still do love this ride and it is in my top 30. It's just definitely nowhere near the top roller coaster at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Number 9 on the underrated list is my personal number 3 favorite roller coaster, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. This ride is amazing and I really do not hear that many people talking about it, which is really disappointing to me. It's a long ride, it has great airtime, and overall it's just so fun to ride over and over and over again. I know that a lot of people complain about the lap bars, but honestly, they didn't bother me that much. Really, the lap bars on Superman Ride of Steel at Six Flags America bothered me way more and I hear a lot of praise from those restraints. Overall, I have heard a decent amount of people talk about this ride, but just not enough, so that's why it's at number 9 and not even higher. Number 9 on the overrated list is Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. This ride is such an adrenaline rush and it's super fun to ride, but it's just so short. I've heard people put this towards the top of coasters at Cedar Point, even like number 1, number 2, number 3, and I simply don't get it. While the ride is exhilarating and it's super fun, the shortness of it just makes it go so, so down in my rankings. If I could only ride one coaster, Top Throw Dragster wouldn't even be close to the top of my list just because it would be over in 17 seconds and then that would be it. Number 8 on my underrated list is Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm. This ride is so awesome and it really does not get the credit that it deserves. 
the gracefulness, the open feeling, the inversions are all just amazingly graceful and I like just relaxing on this ride. I always hear people put accelerator and even a silver bullet over this thing and I just don't get it. It's at least the number two in the park. Maybe even number one if Ghost Rider is having a bad day. In addition, hang time is so beautiful, especially at night with its amazing lighting package. And riding it with that lighting package going just adds a whole new element of awesomeness to this ride. At number eight on the overrated list is Maverick at Cedar Point. Maverick is a great ride, I have to give it that. It's nice and long, it has some great elements, some non-existent airtime, but really the main thing that I just don't really like about this ride is the restraints. I totally can get if people can see past the restraints why this coaster is so good in their minds, but really those restraints are so painful that it kind of ruins the rest of the ride for me. Especially on those airtime moments when you're really supposed to get airtime, but you can't because of the restraints just digging into your legs. But I know that a lot of people share the same opinion as me, so that's why it is here at number 8 and not even higher. Number 7 on the underrated list is at Cedar Point as well, and that is Rougarou. Yeah, did not see that coming. Rougarou is a mid to top tier floorless coaster, and no one can ever tell me differently. I rode this thing probably five or six times, and I did not get a single shred of head banging. I don't know what people are talking about. This ride is so smooth, it's so graceful, but also intense in some moments. It's just the perfect mix that makes an amazing floorless coaster. But it's not like it cracks any of my top 10, top 15, or anything like that. So that's why it's still down here at number seven. Number seven on the overrated list is something that I actually mentioned when I was talking about hang time, and that is Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. This thing gets so much hype. People always gawk over the amazing acceleration of Accelerator. And while, yes, this is cool, it lasts for literally like 2.6 seconds, and that is the whole ride. It's kind of similar to Top Throw Dragster in that it's just so short. And even Top Throw Dragster, you can get amazing views and it's super high up and you feel like you're falling forever. This thing just goes up a little bit. There's no airtime at the top. I don't know what people are talking about there. And then you just go around a turn and the ride is over. There is no chance that that thing is better than hang time. And I even put Silver Bullet over it. Speaking of Silver Bullet, number six on the underrated list is Silver Bullet at Knott's Berry Farm. A lot of Knott's Berry Farm today. Silver Bullet right now is my favorite B&M invert. Yes, I have ridden Montu and I have ridden Raptor. Silver Bullet is just so graceful, but also intense in other moments. The setting is amazing. The length is pretty good. And just overall, there's no head banging at all, which I get on a lot of other B&M floorless and inverts. And just overall, it's kind of the perfect B&M invert. The only one that I can think may be better, maybe Banshee or something in Europe. Number six on the overrated list is something that is very much overrated by the man, the myth, the legend, Airtime Thrills. Yes, it is Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. Why do people like this ride? I even put my hands down as we were approaching the third lap because I was just not having fun. Overall, I rode it twice and both times I got off disappointed. One of my GP friends even said that the ride was rough, which is funny to me because it really does show that the ejector airtime is not strong enough to be enjoyable, not weak enough to be floater, so it's just a weird mix in the middle where it makes the ride hurt. Overall, I don't know why people like Wicked Cyclone, but I've also heard a, a couple people hate on it, so that's why it's not even higher on this list. At number five on the underrated list is my personal favorite roller coaster in Texas, and that is...
So in order to make this video shorter and to add a little bit more suspense, I decided that I'm going to make this video two parts. So the next part that will come out in just a couple of days will be um, from five all the way down until one. Sorry to end it on such a cliffhanger, but gotta, gotta make people come back and watch the second part. So look out for that literally coming out in like maybe three, four days, hopefully. By the way, sorry for not uploading for almost two weeks and then uploading and then not uploading for another two weeks. Um, I've been super busy with school and um, I had a dance competition and I have another one coming up. And then of course work has made it hard to actually go to the park. So yeah, bear with me. I'll try to do the best I can. But anyways, um, until part two, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out. Thank you.